So how high did you say the rafters were? Uh, ten feet above. Ten feet. I'm gonna... Ah, screw it. I'm gonna try climbing. Just do your normal athletics check, and we'll add two from your ability. All right. <laughs> your bonus Plus two, that's a 15. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that, that was my second action, I believe. So I start climbing up, uh -huh. and I'm gonna... Can I use another action to move again? I will say that you do have... You, you do have uh, you could attack it right now and that is a hit roll damage okay okay your oh, exploit vulnerability on. turns that into enough damage <laughs> ah! this, this one falls to the ground and in undercom Ooh. they're yelling flee flee first blood <laughs> would you like me to roll an athletics check sure all right then I'm particularly the most suited for this, but she'll go ahead and try and get a good foothold as she rolls. Mm -hmm. Whoosh. Okay, Retain. five feet up. Another. To... Five more feet to get to the level of the rafters. Oh, I keep rolling athletics? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We can narrate every roll. <laughs> well... All right. Um, how many more can I do, perchance? Can I keep going each is an action. for my stride value? Oh, each is an action. All right. So I've already um, strided here. That was another. I guess I failed that one. So that would make three. Oh, you made more than one check. Oh, 14 and. Oh, five, you know what? You didn't make either. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm going to try climbing. Ah, uh, you make it. All right, you've reached the rafters. Now, this is the hole in the ceiling. The balance action is to move half your speed if you succeed. Is that an acrobatics check, I suppose? It is, it is. So that's another movement, right? I have to use... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Okay, second action, so to move again. Oh, 24, 24. That's a critical success. I, I set the DC to 10, so you get to move your full speed. All right, so I would like to move all the way through the little hole those rascals escaped through. Well, you'll need to climb out after that on your next. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Kobe, now you get to vicariously experience this. Well, you you get to see someone else dealing with these roles. All right, it's me. I will turn to Granny and I'll say, "We need some leadership. The party is splitting." <laughs> and I'm gonna stride um, over here. Oh, that bridge just fell into the water. <laughs> oh. The bridge just fell yeah, into the water. It was... I'm going to try and swim and climb the ledge uh, uh, to, to the other side. Yeah, uh, but you do need a free hand. You need two free hands for... Well, I need, I, need, I need two actions to, like, stow my weapon. My weapon and armor uh, and shield, right? Yeah, stow, stow, climb. And then climb, yeah. Granny! Uh, what are you thinking of your uh, team at this point? Incompetent. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stride to the edge here. Mm -hmm. Action one, retrieve rope. Action two, and That's then two I'm gonna to get something yep. stowed away. You have to take oh, the is? backpack off and then take the rope out. Okay, well then I have rope in my hands. <laughs> this is action text. The uh, you know the the lesson. <laughs> I mean, this very first combat encounter found found all of us like oh i can't climb very well oh i couldn't swim very effectively oh i'm having a hard time balancing along this thing you know what i mean so i can definitely see those skill feats like seems like what they tend to do more than anything is improve quality of life i can I'll point get... out those mites had to make those same checks too and i was rolling on my end right so it can kind of definitely down. get a little frustrating when you know, the, the three action economy is simple. It's great. A lot of times it's whatever, but then sometimes, you know, yeah, you'll find yourself like, oh, I need to get some rope out. Okay, backpack, rope, and then I had to move. Okay, my turn's over. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, that can be a little frustrating, right? When, when movement and when movement is not tied to, well, I sorry, when movement is not separate from uh, your actions, right? And there are a lot fewer things that you can do as a free action. Um, then sometimes that three action economy can feel 
not as awesome as it first feels when you f first realize that you get three actions every single turn, you know, coming from D and D it's like, oh, I get three whole actions every single turn. Well, yeah, but you, trust me, like you're going to use them. They go away fast. Yeah. That's yeah. what I realized today. <laughs> that is something that I'm going to have to deal with a lot useful here. We're a combat climber, which monkey has mm -hmm. lets him, uh, have used one of his hands while he's climbing to mm -hmm. fight. He can fight with it and he's not flat footed while mm -hmm. he's climbing. The other one is steady balance. You, um, when you succeed, you critically succeed on a balance check and you're not flat footed. Which means that you um, move at regular well speed when you're balancing as opposed to half. Yeah. Right? What this does is, yeah, it's kind of like the action tax. It's like a tax. You can say it that way. But it also means that when you choose an ability, you feel a concrete improvement. Whereas, um, especially in 5e, since the your proficiency bonus doesn't go up very much, like a level one rogue might roll, might do a better athletics check, a higher number than a level 15 fighter. And so it's a little harder to... Um, there, there's more... Uh, if, if you like that, you, there's more rule support to show you're getting better at your skill back to what colby said because like it is enjoyable when it works <laughs> like when you do a lot of things <laughs> in your turn and you're like oh my god i did so much but when you're like i used one of my actions to move five feet and you're like that that, that feels bad <laughs> it's not yeah. great um yeah. or i used one of my action to do nothing also to not even move right which is odd because i was like i'm a monkey i can climb is there something that allows me to climb and i was like that okay cool thanks i'll take it <laughs> that's i think it's a higher level ancestry feat that has the tail thing as a prerequisite i'm gonna guess is level five or level nine mm -hmm. and there are higher level skill feats like uh that give you a climb speed i think you have to be a master in athletics to get so a that'll climb be cool speed can, that uh, any any them. character even a non-monkey could get <laughs> uh, okay well, so the standing on. up problem, Kobe. You know about the kip up feet. Yeah, yeah. I took yeah. that on my on my thief because it's like acrobatics lets you I... stand up as a free action, yeah. and it does not provoke reactions. So, you know, it's more defined. I have a lot of mixed feelings because there's a lot of stuff that I really like, and then there's a lot of stuff that I really don't like. Um, I will say that I've never had this much fun creating a character. Like that. That is <laughs> definitely one of the biggest like most interesting parts about Pathfinder is like really creating this very unique thing. I've definitely noticed that there is a lot less like feats or abilities that just let you do things, like just successfully just do things, which is something that D&D &D does a lot. Um, you're, if you're good at something in D&D, &D, you can kind of just do it. So I'm um, the character that I'm playing, mm -hmm. a cleric, melee cleric, um, with the shield, the race a shield action. I don't know how controversial this is in the Pathfinder community, mm -hmm. um, but I can I can I can see that this is going to like really limit me because I have I'm taking an action penalty on every single thing that I do if I want to use my shield. If you want to use it. If I want to use it, so because the the three action system for Pathfinder. One of the coolest things, I think, is the ability to be able to turn your move action into something else, which I think is really fun. But if I want to use a shield, like I can't use a sh I can't benefit from my shield, move and cast a spell. Um, I only get the one attack if I want to move as well, if I want to use my shield. Um, if I cast a spell, you have to use my shield or move. I think that can be a little bit tricky. Um, I'm not sure still how useful the shield is. I, I get the impression that it's really, really powerful, which is how it's kind of balanced. It's still too early for me to tell anything, really, right? Like, I mean, it, it, this is just my first game, so I have no idea how it's going to play out in terms of how much I enjoy the uh, the economy. There's like a level one fighter feat that you could get through an archetype that lets you raise your shield as a reaction. And Yeah, I saw that from the Bastion. the Bastion archetype to see if there's a way to not have of to Of course, that shield. would mean no opportunity attack. Getting that reactive shield feat would prevent me from being able to do the shield block, which kind of conflicts a little bit with the build. Yeah. Unless I were to, I think champion has a level 10 feat that lets me get an extra reaction specifically for shield block. 
but that's a level 10 feat which we yeah i think we need to have some more um straight up battles where you can reach the enemy <laughs> yeah and then we're, we're gonna we're if you can close into the enemy then you're gonna have that option of you know raise your shield versus an attack at minus five yeah that's why it's hard for me to say like how it feels yet because we didn't really get like a straight like you know combat combat just like yeah punching each other in the face combat although we haven't had much time to explore it mechanical wise um comparing D 5e and pathfinders action economies uh i do believe uh in general um probably early game i have no idea late game but early game dungeons and dragons is more like a five action system for pathfinder where mm. in D D you get to move 30 feet it's free uh, that would be an action to stride in Pathfinder 2e. You can move five feet, attack, twenty-five feet. You can you can do so much mm -hmm. stuff with that movement in D and D that you can't do with it's Pathfinder. And not only that, but although uh, I don't think this is uh, how it should be in D and D 5e, a lot of dungeon masters play it this way, which is in D and D 5e, I can pull something out of my backpack as a free action. In Pathfinder 2e, that isn't a full action. Uh, so, two actions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two actions <laughs> stuff, right? yeah. Yeah. So putting away my weapon in D and D wouldn't cost anything. Pulling a rope out on the same turn wouldn't cost anything. Uh -huh. um, moving wouldn't cost anything. And then I have uh, my action and even a bonus action in D and D to go ahead and throw out as well. In Pathfinder 2e, that would take you roughly two turns to to do entirely. Um, hmm. So in that instance, although Pathfinder 2e does offer a lot more intricacies with what you can do, um, a lot of people coming into it with the idea that you're getting more bang for your buck every turn is are going to be uh, upset until later down the line because I think uh, progression in Pathfinder 2e rewards players with giving them more to do per turn. Mm -hmm. If I'm struggling with something right now in the system, it's... There's a good enough chance that I just built my character around this niche and not the other niche. So, like, oh, I'm having trouble climbing. Well, it's because I didn't pick up any climbing feats, surprisingly. So I should try and focus on what I'm good at rather than what I'm not. And that's what I'm primarily focusing on. And if I begin to notice that there's something my character is trying to do a lot that they're not skilled at, I'm going to make it an effort to try and focus into what options I have when I level up moving forward to try and to try and fix that on what you're saying and what rex is saying i feel like uh just on what okay rex said you feats in D, D or abilities let you do a thing mm. and here we're seeing in the case of monkey his ancestry just giving him a plus two bonus to climb instead of letting him have a climb speed and it's um it's a one way you could look at it is that they've planned for the long game they plan for there to be a steady progression in the player's abilities from level one all the way through 20 that there isn't a plateau that you reach at some point yeah um and one thing about the familiar um familiars they help you they can help you with your action economy they can take things up for you and they can deliver healing potions around the battlefield <laughs> because you basically gain an action with a minion. They get two actions if you spend one action on them. So there's just one. One could say it's kind of like um, uh, it's just more. There's more levels of progression that are defined, and that has its pluses and minuses. And scaling definitely feels consistent throughout, and that I think is largely based on the way that you, you the, the majority of your power increase comes from your level. <clears throat> but that said, yeah, I do appreciate that, you know, some, some, uh, some of the more powerful skill feats, for example, will be, you know, have a level requirement of three or seven or whatever, and let you do increasingly more cool, more powerful stuff, help you out with your action economy so that, like you say, you can, you can stride and make an attack. Yeah. yeah. Level one feels really good in Pathfinder. I'll say that too. Um, mm -hmm. You get more hit points, which is great. They should do that in D and D. Like I, I don't know why level one is just so weak and vulnerable, and you don't yeah. have many abilities. And here, it feels like you can do more, straight up. Yeah, you, you can achieve a lot more, which is good. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for your. That was a great 
talk.